Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an action comedy film called The Shaolin Boy. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Li is a six-year-old monk studying in the Shaolin Monastery. He has lived in the monastery and trained in martial arts his entire life. At the beginning of the movie, Li walks into the monastery and apologizes to his seniors for what he is about to do. He has to showcase his skills by fighting them. Without him realizing, a monk attacks him from the side. Li immediately dodges, even though the attack took him by surprise. The monk manages to throw Li to the wall, but he bounces right back and continues to fight. He showers the monk with several kicks mid-air, displaying his skills. Moments later, the first monk is defeated when Li restrains him with a woven bamboo basket. Following that, he is attacked by the second monk, armed with swords. Li manages to disarm his opponent, leaving him with no choice but to accept defeat. Then he approaches the third and final monk. Even when meditating, the monk senses Li coming towards him and uses a prayer bead to perfectly hit the mirror in a way that blinds Li. Then, in less than a second, the kid is picked up and thrown to the ground. The monk is about to win with the last blow, but Li slides away and kicks him in the chest. The two battle, and in the end, Li wins again. He bows to the shrine and walks outside, while his opponents bow to him as a sign of respect. The head monk tells Li that he scored 88 out of 100 in the test, which is better than most students his age. Li is about to go to a new school in the city as an exchange student. During his stay there, he is supposed to live with a family of three, fathered by a great scientist who is close to the head monk. After wishing farewell, the kid leaves for the city, excited to meet new people. In the following scene, we are introduced to 15-year-old Feng, the chief of the Taekwondo club in his school. He has a fourth grade sister, Shen Shen, who always cheers for her older brother and loves him dearly. The manager of the school Taekwondo club is Lan. She analyzes Fang's matches and gives him a summary of what he could have done better. Lan also seems to have a crush on him, but denies it when asked. Lan's brother Yu is a glutton who loves to eat more than anything in the world. The four of them live in the same neighborhood and are pretty close to each other. One afternoon, Lan is analyzing the previous day's Taekwondo match, as always, while her brother Yu binges on chips and snacks. The sibling's father is a scientist named Dr. Han. Their mother died a few years ago, after which Dr. Han has indulged himself in his work. He is working on a special device that a group of gangsters is interested in. Dr. Han calls the kids to ask them how they are doing. Lan is annoyed because her father is never home with them. Dr. Han promises to return back as soon as possible and tells them to open a gift box that he has just sent to the house. In reality, the box contains the special device he has created that the gang is after. As they are talking, Lee knocks on their door and is received by Lan. She gets busy welcoming him and doesn't notice that her father is being abducted on the other side of the video call. The leader of the gang, Larry, threatens Dr. Han to hand them the important device. Dr. Han, on the other hand, claims that there is no such device. What he has been working on, he says, is an AI technology that will allow his kids to talk to an AI with their mother's voice. I wonder if she'll be good at narrating recap videos. The leader doesn't believe him and holds him hostage. On checking the CCTV camera footage, he finds out that the device has been shipped to his home and received by his children. Two of Larry's henchmen, Sloppy and Fist, volunteer to retrieve the device no matter what. Until they get a hold of it, Dr. Han will be kept hostage. Sloppy and Fist are excited because this is their first job as gangsters. They dress up in eccentric clothes as a disguise and arrive in front of Lan's house. Sloppy tries to barge in when it gets dark, but Fist suggests they wait until the kids leave for school the next day. Meanwhile, Lee is getting accustomed to the new environment. He sees Lan watching a Taekwondo match on TV and is fascinated by the sport. Later, he tries to do his daily nighttime meditation while Yu plays a video game. Both of them disturb each other and find it hard to live together, but soon they play the video game together and bond over it. Case closed, video games are better than meditation. In her room, Lan opens that box sent by her father and sees a panda keychain inside. 
What she doesn't know is that it also holds a pen drive that the gang is looking for. On pressing a button, the panda asks Lan to set a voice-activated password. She exclaims, what password? Which is set as the new password without her knowing. On testing it further, she realizes that the panda is an AI that has her mother's voice. The next morning, Lee gets ready for his first day of school, alongside you and Lan. Sloppy and Fist watch them from inside their car, planning to break in right after they are out of sight. But just then, Sloppy notices that Lan has hung the panda keychain on her bag. They change plans and decide to steal it from her. On the way to school, the group meets Feng and his sister Shan Shan. Lan introduces them to Lee. As they're talking, Sloppy swiftly snatches the keyring and walks away. Lee notices this and does a high jump and several backflips to get to him. Feng is impressed to see that he is a skilled fighter. They both beat him up and get the panda back, but Sloppy doesn't give up. He snatches it yet again, not learning his lesson from the first time. The kids soon surround him and trap him in a garbage bin before pushing him down the road. At school, Lee is introduced to his classmates, who are amazed to see a child monk for the first time. They ask him questions like if he can ever get married and if he knows kung fu. The teacher quiets them down and asks them to wait for the gym period to see his kung fu skills. During the gym class, the coach informs them of a fitness test that will be held next month. The ones who do not pass the test will have to repeat the class next year as well. Yu is worried because he is out of shape and can barely walk properly. Their first task is to run 100 meters. A trained Lee completes two laps before his classmates can complete even one. Next, they are asked to do push-ups, one of the many specialties that Lee has. He does more than 100, while the other kids can hardly do two. To show his true capabilities, he even does push-ups with a single hand, and then with his body vertical. What a show-off. This kid is basically Goku. Everyone cheers and praises him. Then, it is time for them to do high jumps. Elementary school high jumps are a piece of cake for Lee. However, Yu struggles and falls face down on the platform. Back in Dr. Han's lab, the gangster Larry has tied him to a chair and is hitting him with golf balls. To keep himself entertained, Dr. Han teaches him new techniques at his own expense. At night, Sloppy and Fist break into the house looking for the panda. Lee sees them and hides behind a stuffed toy to scare them. He troubles the rookie gangsters, but they soon see him and try to fight him. When Lan comes downstairs, the gangsters grab the panda and run away. Lee tells them what happened, but the siblings think he is joking. In the following scene, Sloppy and Fist are at the lab with golf balls in their mouths. It turns out that they accidentally stole a panda humidifier instead of the special device. They're putting goddamn pandas on everything these days. Larry has to sell the said device to his clients in three days, which makes him impatient. He uses Fist and Sloppy as golf tees to threaten them to complete the task quicker. The following day, after school, the group is watching Fang fight against an opponent. Yu and Shan Shan are talking about two ugly girls in the back of the bleachers. It turns out that the said girls are Sloppy and Fist in disguise. They eye the panda on Lan's bag and wait for the right time to retrieve it. Just then, Lee challenges Feng to a match and everyone goes to the front to watch it. Behind them, the thugs try to take off the panda from the bag, but their wig gets stuck, making them struggle. As the intense fight continues, we see that Feng and Lee match in skills. It ends abruptly when both participants refuse to hit each other. Just then, everyone turns around and sees Sloppy and Fist in their schoolgirl dresses. The kids attack the gangsters, but the two manage to flee with the panda after taking a girl hostage. The students go to the principal and call the police, who promise to do their best to find them. Lee blames himself for what happened, because if he hadn't challenged Feng to a fight, Lan wouldn't have been distracted. The rest of the group makes him understand that they do not blame him. Larry finally gets the panda and uses the pen drive inside of it to open a program on a computer. However, it requires a password to be accessed. Larry asks Dr. Han what the password is, but he refuses to tell them. A couple of programmers try to break the code, but even after trying for an entire day, they are unsuccessful. By the end of it, Larry starts to lose his mind and has a mental breakdown. Then, he sees Lan's message on Dr. Han's phone and decides to use her to blackmail him. Lan has asked her father to come to her birthday tomorrow. Larry replies as Dr. Han and claims that he will be there on time. 
The next evening, Lan and her friends gather at her house for the birthday party. Meanwhile, Feng, Yu, Li, and Shan Shan have gone to the market to get her presents. Lan gets a message from her father saying that he is outside. However, on going out to check, she is abducted and put inside a van. At the same time, Lee and the group spot her and follow the van on their bicycles. They reach Dr. Han's lab and start looking for her. Larry and his business partner are under stress because they were supposed to close the deal yesterday. To make the process quicker, Larry puts a knife to Lan's face and asks her about the password. She in turn inquires what password, and it opens the program on the computer. Outside, Sloppy and Fist are guarding the place. Lee and Fang attack them and knock them out in no time. However, they are soon confronted by Larry's right-hand man, Bradley. He is a fighter, hence they struggle to defeat him, even when teamed up. Inside the lab, Larry and his partner are about to seal the deal, but just then, Yu arrives and secretly frees his sister and father. Lee also comes to their aid and helps them fight the gangsters. Amidst the chaos, Larry gets a hold of the suitcase with the pen drive and runs outside. He is stopped by Dr. Han, Yu, and Lan, who all beat him up. In the meantime, Lee joins Fang again to fight against Bradley. Initially, they struggle, but they eventually manage to defeat him. At last, the police arrive at the scene and save the day. In the ending scene, we see the school's principal award Lee and Yu for their bravery. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.